Hey there friends and welcome to the Amazing Brick Network. My name's Tori Favreau and thank you so very much for joining us for another build and review session. I am super excited to be presenting this one to you. It's the Lego Hidden Side 70424, as you can see there on the box. And um, it's the Ghost Train Express and it looks like a crazy amount of fun. Don't be fooled, this is a decent sized box and um, it's on the, uh, well it's part of the Hidden Side, which sadly is being retired by Lego. I hope it doesn't mean that we are going to see the very last of it, but as a result I thought there may be a couple of sets there that you guys may miss out on or you know you just haven't seen so I thought I'd try to grab them in order to show you that we can all have a bit of fun have a look at the build see what we think of it basically just work our way through it together if you've never seen the hidden side before uh, once you have done your buildings you can see your set come to life you get an app on the phone i have demonstrated that in the past but i'll also do it when we run our way through this particular um this build together so this is what the build will really look like i certainly hope so unless i get things terribly wrong but um, it's a fun, kooky little build, and I love the look of the train itself. It just looks like stacks of fun, and it looks as though there's a lot of playability there. I did enjoy the game when I did have a play of it another time. So you know what? I think, without further ado, we're going to get straight in, build this thing, and have a bit of fun while we do it. How does that sound? Sounds pretty good to me, I say. When I like to open up my Lego sets, I do it super fast. <laughs> I, I was really excited to make this set, folks. I haven't um, made a train set for quite, well, actually for quite a few years. They're a passion of mine. However, I've never had really had the space for trains, like to lay everything out like that. My modulars are stacked on shelving. Um, I live in an apartment at the moment, so it's uh, no room for that sort of thing. But um, I was super stoked to get this happening. I mean, sadly, I'll have it on display on the shelf for a while, and then we'll just have to see what happens afterwards. But uh, the minifigures in this set were fantastic. I genuinely like the ones on the hidden side. They are super cool. Now, we are building the little stations platform at the moment. It was a little bit fiddly, that bit just there, but uh, I muddled on through. We got it all happening. Now... Depending on when you're watching this, we're actually recording this on Christmas Eve. So it will be released for Christmas Day to give you something to watch there. And uh, I do hope that you sincerely enjoy it. And I do hope that uh, on Christmas Day you're playing with your own Lego sets. That's for sure. Whether they're from Santa or from a loved one. Or whether it's just something you went, you know what? Sod it. I'm going to spoil myself. As you can see, the book in the background there, that's the instructions. I've got a little stand that I put it on. There's the bottom of the platform. Now, this was the actual ladder that went up to the platform. And I don't know, because I've sped up the video quite a lot. The build took over two hours. Um, I don't know if you'll notice, but I'm constantly fiddling with it. Because I was like, I don't get that. Okay, now I've moved it. Now it's gone back up. Now I've moved it. Now it's gone back up. So you may see a little bit of fiddling going on there. But uh, either way around, um, I really like the amount of detail that was even in this small platform build. I thought they did a really good job of it. And I know I've said it in other videos, but I really like that green color too. There we go, the dreaded stickers. I don't like the stickers, but they did actually work and look r rather good in um, the Newbury Station. If you're not familiar the, with the hidden side, everything happens in the town of Newbury. And um, yeah, it's overrun with ghosts and other creatures of the night and jack and his friends scan them and fight them and you can do a lot of stuff also on the uh hidden side game so that's an app that you can download you uh then scan your sets and they come to life and it's really cool one thing i will tell you now just so you do keep watching all the way through you will see me playing the, um the hidden side i don't do a lot of it because it's the way i have to record it is through a screen recorder so as you get the best possible quality vision but it doesn't record the audio, so uh, I do apologize for that. I'm simply going to talk over the top of it, but um, I didn't do it for too long, so I thought it's going to be a little bit dull if you can't hear the sound effects and everything like that that the game does do. Stickers everywhere. I wonder what the printing cost is on a brick as opposed to the, uh, the sticker cost. I know the sticker would be a lot cheaper, but come on, guys. Does anyone actually know? That would be really interesting to find out how much, because I, I, I'm guessing it's some sort of really advanced pad print, but um, how much it costs to 
or how much it slows down production for that ink to dry. I'm sure they have some sort of drying process that they could use, especially on some of the higher end sets. It, it actually amazed me how many stickers were on the Ecto-1. That's the Ghostbusters car, which I built a while back. There's a video for that on the feed if you want to have a look. There you go. This is like the hidden part of it all. Like the hidden side, there's like menace everywhere. And so we're building like the station's sign. As you can see there, there's another sticker. But when you flip it over, you've got eyes and vicious teeth looking at you. There we go. Did you like how quickly I put those minifigures on there? Oh, it's just like... Phew. So there's our first piece of track. I must admit, on the train sets that I've had, I've never had that piece I just put on the right-hand side, but it actually guides the train perfectly up onto the rails. I feel like such an idiot saying it like that, but it was something that was totally new to me, and I was um, really surprised. And the stupidest thing is, I did not figure that out until after the video when I was fooling around with it. I actually think you may see me discover it as I'm doing my little review on the set. Now we're onto the train. This was the part I was excited for. And I have seen that uh, apparently you can actually put a power functions into this and uh, yeah, have it running around a track, which I think is pretty cool. I am not clever enough to figure that sort of thing out myself. I do trust um, my very valuable members of the amazing Lego train group that I started on Facebook. They're so knowledgeable. So if you ever do want to learn stuff about trains, Hop onto Facebook and look at the amazing Lego Trains group. You'll see the amazing uh, Brick Network logo on there. So as you know, you're at the right place. And they are sure to guide you perfectly with any question that you've got. I just marvel at the stuff that people can do. As you guys know from watching me build this, I struggle enough with, with the instructions sometimes, let alone coming up with the masterpieces that some of you builders do. It was even things like this, like you won't be able to tell because I've sped up the video. But for a brief moment there, I was like, why is there two sets of all the same pieces here? And it was literally because I'd missed the part that told me to do the other side as well. Here we go. We're fixing it. Just a little bit of greebling here to put a bit of detail on, which I always think is cool. I love when there's all these little elements on that help create a more convincing part of the story. I think that's really neat. Now, this is going to be a pretty cool mechanism. I think this was very clever. It's simple, but once again, it's something I wouldn't have thought of, and it works convincingly well. I can tell you now, it's going to be coming up soon, but uh, those two Technic pieces that you can see just dangling off the uh, lever I just made... They were so painful. Inside the carriage there, you can see a ball joint. They have to clip down onto two ball joints in order to um, make a certain mechanism work, which we're going to show you shortly. And it felt like it took forever to get them all locked on and locked down properly. There, there you go. See what happened there? It's, it's not as majestic when I have to speed the whole thing up. Just some nice detail there. Bag number three. Five bags in this lot. And here was the interesting part. And I don't know if this will happen too fast because of the speed up. But um, the train people, um, they had alternate builds. So I tried to show you this by changing it. There we go. I did show you. So, uh, yeah, that was pretty cool. I do like how, you know, everyone in Newbury could possibly be affected by this thing. And when you do the actual game itself, you will find yourself on occasion like finding people that are haunted or possessed. So it's always an interesting thing that we do have to look out for there to make sure that everyone in Newbury is safe, of course. Even these little details here, they were... Really well thought out. It did make some of the building on the inside of those rails difficult, like reaching in, but that's just because I've got sausage fingers. This is another lever that we're starting to make, which you'll see the mechanism for that shortly, and I do show it in a lot more detail toward the end of the uh, 
the video there. So once you get past me playing the game, please keep watching because there is video with a wrap-up review of it all. And the most amazing Hollywood quality sound effects that you're ever likely to hear. If they don't delight, I'll be really surprised. See that? That's cool. Now, that little bit goes in there and we've got our mechanism. Check that out. The interesting thing is at this point, because there is no actual like uh, engineer's cabin, uh, the mouth or the hood ornament part could move. And um, like it, it did an extension that I didn't expect it to. And then when you actually do build in all the other parts, it restricts its movement a bit more, which does facilitate the opening and closing of the mouth. I do ask this at the end of the video, but I'll ask it here too. 30877. I was a little bit lost, and this, and I'm happy to be corrected here, but um, that's not the set number. So why did this train get that number? Could some of our train friends please let me know? I'll be very grateful because I feel like I'm missing something. Often the Lego sets, like license plate numbers on vehicles, are the set number. Uh, numbers of trains is the set number, but this one doesn't match up and I I'm sure it's something that I just haven't noticed It may be very straightforward, but I have not been able to figure it out That's the main body of the train complete now. We're just putting some wheels on Not yet, but we're about to give me a break. I'm doing my best It was so stupid. The first time I did this, there was a significant delay. They just clip on with the Technic pin. That yellow um, chassis bit that you saw goes straight up and in. Because I was looking around where to push the studs in. And no, of course, they're going to move to allow for you to steer it around a curved part of a track. But yeah, once I'd done the first one, the second one was easy. And there we go. It just looks fantastic. I do have more hidden side sets to show you as well. So I'm excited to do those. I've already done one. This is our second major one. Um, I've got some smaller sets and one or two larger sets as well. I'll, I'll surprise you with them. Um, it may be that they will be too late for you to buy them. And if so, I'm sorry. But uh, I still think it's valid and still worth looking at. In fact, I've got some sets to build that are actually several years old. Now, they may have been ones that I've, well, most, for the most part, they are ones that um, I have recently found in Lego, or in non-Lego shops, but toy shops, that have the current range as well, just no one ever bought them. So I thought, okay, well, I can show my friends on the Amazing Brick Network what they look like. Yeah, the wheels on that one were a lot easier. And once again, we do have this assembly here, and I think that is pretty cool. I, I am keen to see some mocks. Uh, that is my own creation. Of this set into a regular train it's just got such a beautiful color uh, set up there it wouldn't take a lot to do it in fact it's pretty much a complete locomotive as is without all the hidden side stuff on it so I mean if you don't crank the uh, the wings out or open the mouth up it's you know a pretty cool set as is and, and that's what really attracted me to it and that and the fact that as I said they are looking to re retire this series so I was keen to get my hands on some. I always get that remorse if, like, I don't get it. And then I think to myself, gracious me, that would have been fun. So this is like a test sort of chamber. And there were stickers there with warnings and, like, radar on it. It looked really impressive. I do hope that you're enjoying the build so far. Please be sure to share it with your friends if you haven't done so already. Just helps get the word out there, helps the channel grow. There we go. Bag five. Final bag, guys. You've been incredibly patient. Thank you so much for sticking with us the whole time. I know sometimes we're pressed for time and it's a little bit hard to watch the whole thing. But I do hope that you do make your way through these builds. Uh, I do find them fascinating to watch myself. And sometimes if I'm making the same set myself... I do find it helps a little bit because if there's a bit I got stuck on, I can then look at it and go, okay, oh, that's what they did. That's the part I missed. That's the bit I need to fix. 
So it does broaden that sort of horizon for all that sort of thing. Now this area here that we're making, the final carriage, it's like a little uh, container carriage. And um, yes, I get this part wrong and I realize I'm wrong in a second. You'll see me change the orientation of the front maroon part. There we go, fixed. It's good in fast motion. I just fix stuff so quickly. It's quite incredible. Good on you, Tori. Good on you, mate. So this is almost done. Getting ready here. I love the color of those gold uh, plates there or tiles. And these are the doors for the back of that carriage. And they look as though they could be locked up with some Technic pins by putting them on there. You put that on there though, and then as I show you later, you can't do anything with the doors. Finally, there's like a laser ghost fighting cannon that I'm making now. Now, you didn't see this, but um, as I was making this, there were Technic pins in that laser cannon to put the uh, tire parts on the sides there, the rims. And for the longest time, I could not find it. And it was directly under a piece. I felt so silly. All right, folks, we are almost there, so I will uh, give this part the wrap-up. We are going to be talking our way through the hidden side set shortly. So uh, thank you so much for watching the build. Let's get on to the game part of it, and let's see what you think of that. Once again, I have sped this up a little bit. The game scans uh, the set. It's very clever. It comes to life, and away you go. That train was moving, but uh, because of the speed of the video, you probably didn't see it do so. And then you use the scanner, which is your phone, because they use phones on the, on the game, and um, it detects certain parts of the set. Then you find the gloom, which is like the mysterious sort of force that's there. You can clear the gloom from the area, and then it is a case of, well, do you scan figures? Do you fight ghosts? In this case, we'll briefly fight a ghost. But now, let's get on to the actual review. So folks, that wraps up the build. I hope that you enjoyed watching it. And I just thought, well, this is a chance for us to have a look through some of the play features here and um, have a little bow peep. And it's pretty clever, some of the stuff this can do. So firstly, we'll remove some of our uh, minifigures here. Firstly, we'll have a look at them because they're pretty cool. Alrighty. You hop off that train, Missy. That's not safe. Love the little details on the mobile phone. Now, in case you didn't see during the build or if it went a bit too fast, these guys here, our little possessed little ghosty people, they did have alternate heads and hair that you could just swap over and uh, you know have yourself a bit of fun with them. There we go. But I'm going to keep them as little ghoulies because I think they look pretty cool. Cooly ghoulie. Coolie. Okay. So, the train itself. Let's have a check of that. Firstly, off the off the tracks. Come over here. Choo-choo. Alright, I'm just going to disengage that. I'm keep waiting for things to fall apart as I'm doing it. Now, train buffs who are watching this may know the reason behind this. Like, They've got the 30877 there. Now, in the past, LEGO sets have, like, the train numbers have been the, the, the actual set number. And the thing I don't get here is it's 70424. If you do know the reason behind that, I would love to know. Um, because, you know, there's quite a few people who watch this show who are really into their trains, which I appreciate. Maybe you know the reason for this. But in the meantime, I'll show you some of the features of the actual train itself. So, see that lever there? That was pretty cool. Now, I did demonstrate this during the actual filming. Hopefully, this looks all right. But uh, by moving it forward, there's wings that pop out the sides. I'll do it on the side angle so you can see it. As you can see, the hinge moves up and down. So, that's pretty cool. I guess at some point, this train can fly. But even then, it can show a little bit of ferocity too. With this lever here, now, if I turn it the correct way, there we go. Um, it doesn't actually do that. That's just a noise I'm making. Uh, so, 
yeah, it goes from something really cool to something monstrous, which is the whole idea behind the hidden side. And it's very robust too. Like, I'm flicking that at pretty much full force. And it's loving it. So, that's the undercarriage. And, of course, the driver's door opens up. And if you can see inside there, it, there's not a lot of stuff, but there's enough to make you think that the dude could drive it if he wanted to. So, yeah, that's really cool. I do like that feature. Now we'll just move these guys on here. So this is a testing area, I guess, for scanning. And it does open up. And I'll probably make a mess of this, but uh, hey, live video. Get you, no, go in there. Go into the plastic testing chamber. Goodness gracious me, guys. Get in there. Okay, so then, get in there. Okay. I mean, who really would want to go in there? And I don't blame there being resistance. Um, also, this is the area that you do spin around to play the game. And of course, you've got the scanner on there and you've got the alarm stickers as well. Stickers, my worst enemy. So that's that one there and that does come off pretty readily. So if you did want to uh, make something else with it, I guess you could, but then it wouldn't be this set anymore. And finally, we've got slime all over the place. The word booze been spray painted. We've got what looks like a gun up here. That's pretty cool. I do like that. I love the use of the purple translucent studding. That looks really neat as well. And finally, a containment area, which doesn't make a lot of sense because uh, when it's on here, it doesn't open up. You do have to remove it, and then there are doors as, as so. Doors as so. And finally, let's move these to one side so as we can have a look here at the station. And the station's got a couple of play features as well. Uh, Jack, some dude, Paul. His name's Paul. I just read on the side of the box. Hey, Paul. How you doing, mate? Okay. So you've got the steps there. They do move. And I kept, if you see, I kept correcting how they were looking during the build, which was sort of funny. Little rubbish bin there. Sticker detail on, on the uh, actual uh, windows themselves, you know, cracks and other bits and pieces. And um, surprisingly for a derelict station, the chairs are really clean. Um, so, yeah, cleanliness is good, um, close to uh, hauntingness, I guess. There was one spare piece of track left. So if you did want to make that a little bit longer for the slide factor, you certainly could. Also, this sort of on-ramp here. If you do bring the train up, directs it immediately onto the track. So that's a cool feature because sometimes when you are making these things, they're hard just to align onto the track. So having that guide there certainly helped a lot with that also. So that was a cool feature. You've got your, uh, your bumper here, the stop area for the train. And of course, Newbury Station, which is the town where they all live. You flip that over, you've got the eyes, you've got the fangs. Turning it around, you've got a little bit more going on here. So you can see that there's more teeth there and they can, they can rotate about and they can go down here. So all up, you go from sort of a normal derelict station to something really scary and, you know, that they've got to go and investigate and sort out where the bad guys are. In any case... This was a lot of fun to make. As I may have mentioned earlier, it is a set that um, they're retiring, which is a real shame in my opinion, because um, I think it's fun. It's certainly got lots of potential and um, I do think they could have done a lot more with it. But in any case, I'm so glad to have been able to show it to you. I hope that you've enjoyed the build. Hit that subscribe button if you haven't already and click that bell for notifications. And finally, thank you so much for taking the time to watching. I'll see you next video. Bye.